Hello, welcome to yet another session. Today we move to examine the Dove Beauty campaign and its effects on the ethical principles of that campaign on women and those groups that were targeted as a result of that particular campaign that ensued around most of the developed world. As we discussed in our last session, advertisers and those who engage in public relations and strategic com have an equally important role to play in the context of producing that which is ethically sound for the consumer. You will see in this upcoming video questions pertaining to whether the campaign helped to influence in a positive way the self-esteem of the women who were targeted or whether there were some ethical concerns that persist as it relates to how women saw themselves beyond that particular campaign. Let's view this video together. I always thought people were so cute and they have the little cheeks and they're like rosy, but mine are pretty plain. If I was going to change one feature about my face, I would say that I would want fuller lips. I'm definitely a person that looks tired when I'm tired and when people say that, I immediately am like, oh man. I'm starting to already get little crow's feet and stuff, which like my mom had, so yeah. I'm a forensic artist. I was trained at the FBI Academy in 1993 in composite art. Worked for the San Jose Police Department as the police artist from 1995 to 2011. We didn't really know what we were doing, so that was nerve wracking for everyone. I showed up to a place I'd never been and walked into this big warehouse. And at the very end, there was a guy with his back to me with a drafting board. I had a curtain separating me so that I don't see him. Uh, we'll begin. First of all, tell me about your hair. Uh, brown, long, I guess a little bit past my shoulders. Your jaw? My mom told me I had a big jaw. Yeah, they're brown eyebrows, dark brown eyebrows. Okay. I didn't know what he was doing, but then I could tell after several questions that he was drawing me. Tell me about your chin. I guess I haven't really compared it to anyone else's chin, but um, especially when like I smile, I just feel like it kind of protrudes a little bit. Hmm. What would be your most prominent feature? I kind of have a fat, rounder face. The older I've gotten, the more freckles I've gotten. You sort of realize, oh man, now I, I have to talk about myself and, and, and think about my looks. I'm 40, so I'm starting to get a little bit of the crow's feet thing going on. Um. Once I get a sketch, I say thank you very much, and then they leave. I don't see them. I still didn't know. All I had been told before the sketch was to get friendly with this other woman, Chloe. Today I'm going to ask you some questions about a person you met earlier, and I'm going to ask you some general questions about their face. She was thin, so you could see her cheekbones. And her chin was a nice, thin chin. Mm. The women were really critical about moles or scars or things like that. And yet, they were describing just a normal, beautiful person. She had nice eyes. They lit up when she spoke and were very expressive. The length of the nose, what is that like? A short. Short. Yeah, cute nose. Her face was fairly thin. She had blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. OK. So here we are. Hmm. So this is your self-described image. And then somebody else described you in the, I did this sketch. This whole thing about having dark circles and crow's feet around my eyes and that was not part of the sketch at all that the stranger did. The stranger's was a little more like gentle. Yeah. 
She looks closed off and fatter. She just looks kind of shut down. Looks sadder, too. The second one is more beautiful. You think they're catching more of that from you? Yeah. 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 She looks more open and um, friendly and a long way in how I see myself, but I think I still have oh, some way to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have some work to do on myself. Do you think you're more beautiful than you say? Yeah. Yeah. Chloe's perception was so, so clearly different. Her picture looked like somebody I thought I would want to talk to and be friends with, like a happy, light, much younger, much brighter person. It's troubling. I should be more grateful of my natural beauty. It impacts the choices and the friends that we make, the jobs we apply for, how we treat our children. It impacts everything. It couldn't be more critical to your happiness. Our self-perceptions are generally kind of harsh and unbecoming when really that's not how the world sees us. We spend a lot of time as women analyzing and trying to fix the things that aren't quite right, and we should spend more time appreciating the things that we do like. So that was You Are More Beautiful Than You Think, and that's the campaign. The essence of it was really to get women to state exactly how they felt about their beauty and then to get someone else to describe exactly what they saw. And the video, the campaign really underscored the notion, the notion that beauty is really in the eye of the beholder. And that's exactly what some of the concerns were for the critics who said that they did not think the campaign was clear on women who were basically self-loathing. They saw themselves as far less than they truly were and are in the eyes of the person who was actually doing the sketches. And so when it comes to where we're standing in terms of beauty campaigns, questions pertain to, um, you know, to what extent is the campaign really helping women to not be critical, self-critical, but to what extent has the campaign or is the campaign helping them position themselves better than the world is actually seeing them. And of course, through whose eyes are you actually looking to describe yourself in the context of the beauty campaign? So let's examine exactly what the Dove Beauty campaign has actually done for women and to what extent can we still reflect on campaigns that are existing at the moment to incorporate women's self of self-esteem and whether those particular um, types of self-perceptions reflect the reality. So the campaign, the Dove Beauty campaign, really started um, some years ago. I think I'm having a little bit of problem here with sharing my screen, but we should get back to normal very soon. Um, the campaign started some years ago in terms of what um, was actually happening around the country, not just the US, but I guess around other developing countries as well. Um, it started in 2005, to be exact, in the United Kingdom, and of course, major features of the campaign included some huge print ads, some big billboards, and of course, commercials and online videos. And those particular commercials and videos featured women of all shapes, sizes, ages, and race. And I'd love for you to go back to one of those videos that I posted on B12, 
to see the genesis and the development and the successes of the campaign. The articulated purpose of the campaign was to highlight the positive aspects of women and to expand the definition of beauty beyond the thin blonde stereotype. And so when it came to those particular actions of Dove, it was seen as CSR or some person's question whether it was corporate social responsibility. So advertising really coincided significantly with the way in which Dove went around really gaining traction among the diverse groups that they were um, attracting to their ads. And so advertising coincided with multiple community service activities. Um, they partnered with Girl Scouts to promote pro-girl events and opportunities. And of course, the online videos were created to generate buzz among the campaign and to challenge those traditional notions of beauty, as we saw in the previous slide in terms of that thin blonde who um, you know, epitomized beauty. And so the evolution video went viral and turned the campaign for real beauty into a household name. Now, women were seeing themselves as beautiful, um, women who were over 40, um, quote unquote, women who were still in their prime at a certain age, and they did not see themselves as out of the game as a result of what the campaign did for their self esteem. Um, that apart, there were also some successes and media claim and the sales increased significantly for Dow. Now, apart from that, there were a couple of downsides I'd like to share with you. And these have to do with the general perceptions around which the campaign um, was, 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 you know, was formed. Um, after the campaign, marketing methods really were um, seen as magnifying women's imperfections. Many felt that you are actually forcing a woman to talk about her imperfections. And of course, that is what will impact their self-esteem. So not everyone was a proponent of the campaign, you know, for them, for those who were not in favor, they felt that you were actually causing women to self-loathe or to highlight their flaws um, for the world to hear and see. And so US consumers in particular aren't accepting of large size women as beautiful. So the, the idea that you are um, going beyond stereotypes and you're um, blurring those boundary lines when it comes to beauty, um, critics felt that in as much as the campaign was a success for Dove in, their, in, in terms of their dollars and cents, when in fact, you know, you still have people who don't necessarily see full size women or women of color as beautiful or as women of a certain age, then the campaign has not necessarily been a success with regards to those lingering stereotypes in society in terms of how we've come to define beauty and beauty standards, especially as it relates to large size women as being beautiful. Now, notwithstanding all of these criticisms, the campaign still managed to sustain interest and attention uh, due to really its um, break from traditional um, and competitive edge types of products and the way in which advertising has evolved over time. Now for its 10th anniversary, we would have seen a whole lot of, I would say diversity, and this was around 2015. Um, Dove is still a product that is out there making inroads, but as it turned 10, it caused people to reflect on how it was able to change the conversation around female beauty. Uh, 10 years after the, con the, the exhibition actually opened, the campaign for real beauty um, remained one of the modern marketing um, most talked about success stories. And so it has expanded um, from billboards and television ads to online videos. And so, like I said, the evolution video went viral and that was a success. Um, as it relates to um, all of the other questions around the campaign, we see that there are still questions pertaining to the what's and the how's of the ethics. And I'd like to encourage you to just, you know, access the readings in terms of the criticism and to access videos as well in terms of other campaigns that have really magnified what is happening in the context of advertising and beauty standards.